All right, now we're going to look at some uh, examples of using substitution here. Before we start, let's remind ourselves of the power rule that we're going to use, and we have been using. Integral of x to the n, x to the n plus 1, divided by n plus 1. Now, if you have a function instead of just x, as in if it sort of involves a composition, you're going to have to do this substitution thing. Now, when we had the derivative, we said that extra piece appeared. Like if you have derivative of x squared plus 3 to the 10th, it became 10, that to the 9th, times 2x. This extra piece kind of showed up. Once we use substitution, the extra piece is not there anymore. So when we say, what's the integral of this? Once we change to du and u, this is just going to be u to the n plus 1, 1 over n plus 1. The, the extra piece is already dealt with once you make that du substitution. Let me show you what I mean here. It's always easier to see it from an actual example. So if we're going to do this, uh, I'll start off with here, it's set up so you can kind of see what's going on here, or you can kind of see what, what it's, it's more obvious what to pick as the u. You want to pick something for u where you also have the derivative there. So underneath this square root sign here, you have x to the fourth, and then you have 4x to the third right here. So that's a prime candidate for making u here. If you make this x to the fourth plus 9, then the derivative of that is 4x to the third. So du is 4x to the third dx. Now you can make that substitution. right? You can substitute u for this, which we already did there. So let's make it into u. We have square root of u, or in other words, u to the 1 half, right? And then we also have our du is going to be 4x to the third dx. Well, look at that. We have 4x to the third dx. So we're going to put in then integral of that du. Now, as I said up there, we've already dealt with this extra piece when we change to du. When you change it to du, this extra bit from the chain rule is already gone. And then when we write this, all we're going to say that this is equal to is it's going to be u to the 3 halves. And then we're going to divide by 3 halves. So that's 2 thirds there, plus a constant. So when we go back to writing this out here, we got 2 thirds. u to the 3 halves, it's that function of the 3 halves, x to the 4th plus 9. If you want to write it as we did to start with, you could make it 2 thirds square root of x to the 4th plus 9 to the 3rd, just to use root signs like the original thing had, and that's it. All right. So as you're working through this, when you start, the extra piece is there, and it disappears when you do that u substitution. It's the reverse of the chain rule. When you use the chain rule for derivatives, the extra piece appears as you're doing the derivative. Here, as you work through it, it disappears. There's no kind of extra piece here in what we ended up with. That's always troubling, I know. Second one here. Uh, let's decide what we're going to choose for each of the things. Probably you're zeroing in on that as what you're going to use for u, and that is a good choice because if you choose x to the third plus 3, its derivative is 3x squared. So du is 3x squared dx, right? Because you can just, instead of saying du dx is 3x squared, du is 3x squared dx. And you have that there, except for the fact that you don't have the 3. Okay, So you have two choices here for what you can do. What you can do is, number one, you could put in the original integral here, you could put a 3 here if you also times it by 1 third. All right, so if you make this 1 third integral of 3 times all of that stuff, then it'll work, right? So you can do that. Or, if you don't like doing that, what you can do is you can change this around. Okay, you can change this around and say, if this is true, then what's also true is x squared dx is equal to 1 third du. So either one of those ways, right, is going to work for you here. All right, I'm going to stick with the first way that I did it 
and do that because then I can just replace 3x squared dx with du. And then in a second we can just quickly look at it the other way. So we've got integral of, and we should keep our, let's do this first, change that thing first. That's going to become u, and then the other part becomes du. All that stuff in green becomes du there. All right. And then I forgot my one third in the front. So we got that integral. Let's move it over here. That integral is, we got our one third. u to the seventh, we got u to the eighth, but we got to go times one eighth plus a constant. Let's make that one twenty fourth right now, and then we'll replace our u back with what we started with here, right? We got to put that back. That is x cubed plus 3 plus our constant. Alright, so that's what that integral is. If you were doing it the other way, let's just quickly look. Let's say we didn't want to do this 3 thing here. Then what we could have done is we could have said instead of making that replacement, our, our x squared dx, you know, if we we're going to do this instead, is 1 third du. If we're replacing x squared dx with 1 third du, then right here we would just put in our 1 third. It's going to appear one way or the other, right? That 1 third is going to come one way or the other. And it, it ends up over there, whichever way you do it. All right? Let's look at this next one. But we'll clear this up a little bit. Make a tiny bit more space there. Um, one more. If you're looking at integral of this, integral of 3x over that. We're going to choose that to be the inside function because I've got its derivative right here. Okay, It's not exactly its derivative. We're going to need a 2, but constants we can deal with. So if I say that this is x squared plus 1, then our du is going to be 2x dx. Now we have 3x, but again we can change this around a little bit here. We can change this to, we can put the 3 out in front, we can say, put all this other stuff here, x squared plus 1 fifth dx. If we want a 2 here, we can just divide by 2 out in front. Okay, and then it'll then it'll work out. Or again, we could have changed this over here, but uh, this is a good way as well. We want to replace that with that. So there's our 2x dx, and here's our u. So we're going to make this equal to 3 halves. Integral of, we've got, let's write it as, um, 1 over u to the fifth du. U, 1 over u to the fifth, we could actually write as, I'll just get rid of this here, we could write it as u to the negative 5. All right? And what we're going to get then is here, I'm going to have to write it down here, although you can hopefully fit it in. Um, what you can do here is 3 halves, we need u, to the, we got to bump this up one. Okay, so you increase this. This is always a place where people make mistakes. Negative five, you go up one, you get negative four. We got to divide by negative four, and then we got to add a constant. So making that all simplified, we got negative three eighths u to the negative four. We're going to put this back in here, x squared plus one to the negative four plus a constant, or if we want to have it completely simplified, negative. 3 over 8. Put this back on the bottom here to the fourth. x squared plus 1 plus a constant. That is it. Okay, that's that integral. Maybe let's move this up here. Get it out of our way. Right there. Almost fits. Move this up. And then we're going to look at this thing down here. Can you use substitution with that? Now, probably if I ask that question that way, probably the answer is no, <laughs> and that would be right. The answer is no, because if the answer was yes, I would probably just say, 
figure out the integral. <laughs> the reason you can't is you can you can pick something for u again, but you don't have anything to be du. You don't have its derivative there. This doesn't look like the result of the chain rule. There's no extra piece there to work with. You'd need an x cubed in there to make that work because if you make this into u, you need an x cubed. Right? There's no x cubed there. In the integrand, integrand is just that thing you're integrating, that piece. Now this last thing here, make up your own. You could make up whatever one you want. When you're thinking of this, you got to think of something here that looks like the result of the chain rule. Doesn't matter about the coefficients, it matters about the variables. So if you want to put something in there where you have a function, say something to the seventh, whatever function you put in there, you also need its derivative there. So if you put x to the fourth plus two, you need to have at least x to the third here. You can have four x to the third if you want. You can have seven x to the third. You can have whatever you want, but you got to have that x to the third. If you put sine x to the seventh there, then you're going to need this to have cos x. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So if you're making up a question, when I made up all those integrals up above there, you have to make sure that you have the derivative of whatever's going to be that u, that inside function, to be able to make it work. All right? So that's the beginning of using substitution with various things. You practice, and it'll be a piece of cake for you.